Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. On this video, I am going to be giving you a preview for the Brighton Hove Albion Manchester United game. Saturday, half past 12, kickoff at the Amex Stadium. Now, this is our second game of the Premier League season and we are looking for our first win in the Premier League. Now, we lost our first Premier League game of the season to Crystal Palace. We lost by three goals to one. And that was our worst defeat on the opening day of a Premier League season since 1995, which is 25 years ago. And it was the second season in a row in the Premier League that Crystal Palace had beaten us at Old Trafford. But we did get back to winning ways recently because we beat Luton Town in the Cowbell Cup third round by three goals to nil. Wasn't the best of performances, like I mentioned on my match reaction, but we still got the win. It was obviously no goals from one matter from the penalty spot. The second goal came from Marcus Rashford and Greenwood also got his name on the score sheet, plus he got an assist. By the way, we do play Brighton next week in the Cowbell Cup fourth round. So we play them twice in the matter of days because Brighton recently beat Preston by two goals to nil. Solskjaer will make changes from our 3-0 win against Luton. I expect David De Gea to return in goal. Uh, David De Gea didn't play against Luton. He was rested. It was Dean Henderson that played against Luton. You know, he made his full debut for the football club. I've said to you, I think that David De Gea will remain our number one goalkeeper this season, or at least for the first part of this season. This season is David De Gea's 10th season at Manchester United. David De Gea has made over 400 appearances for the club in all competitions and he has made 300 odd appearances in the Premier League. But De Gea will stay at the football club for at least another season. I expect Anwan Bissaka to keep his place at right back. He did start against Luton but he didn't play in the uh, Crystal Palace game. Anwan Pasaka has just got to improve his attacking intent, but his defensive contributions always been very, very good. This season is Anwan Pasaka's second season at Manchester United. Maybe Lindelof could come come back in for this game against Brighton. I'd probably you know keep Bay alongside Harry Maguire instead of Lindelof alongside Harry Maguire, because actually you know, I think Bay is a better centre half than Lindelof. But my element of concern about Bay is that he is too injury prone. Uh, Harry Maguire, he will uh, play on Saturday. You know, this season is Harry Maguire's second season at the football club. Uh, Solskjaer's already confirmed that Harry Maguire will remain Manchester United captain. I expect Luke Shaw to come in at left back. Uh, Luke Shaw obviously was rested for the game against Luton. It was obviously you no know, Brandon Williams that played against Luton. You know, Williams was actually you know, the one that won the penalty. But uh, Luke Shaw is our first choice left back at the moment. Not so long ago, Luke Shaw recovered from a ankle injury. I expect Paul Popper to come back into the team. He uh, was rested for the game against Luton. I think Paul Pogba will stay at Manchester United for at least another season. I think what we've got to do is we've got to get Paul Pogba a new long-term contract at the football club to end the uncertainty over his future. As it stands at the moment, Pogba's just got under a year left on his Man United contracts, but the club do have an option to extend it for a further year. As it stands at the moment, Paul Pogba's our most expensive signing because we paid £89 million for him. Uh, maybe McTominway will come back into the team. Uh, McTominway didn't play any part against Luton. McTominway's definitely got to improve. It weren't so long ago that McTominway signed a five-year deal with Manchester United. <clears throat> uh, Donny van der Beek. I expect him to start the game against Brighton on Saturday. It will be his full Premier League debut. 
Don't forget, in the game against Crystal Palace, Donny van der Beek scored on his Premier League debut, but he obviously you know, came on as a substitute. I think Donny van der Beek so far has enjoyed a fantastic start to his Manchester United career. He's played three games so far, played in our 1-0 defeat to Villa in pre-season, played in the Crystal Palace game and also played in the Luton game. And he was very, very good against Luton, you know, had some very, very good touches. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, you know, he should be a start in the game as well. Bruno Fernandes played against Luton, but obviously, you know, come on as a substitute. He did get an assist, by the way, did Bruno Fernandes for Mason Greenwood's third goal. I think in a lot of games, Bruno Fernandes has made an impact. Reflecting on his good run of performances, Bruno Fernandes has won Premier League Player of the Month like three times. And he must have scored like 12 or 13 goals for Man United in all competitions since his arrival from Sporting Lisbon. You know... I also expect Rashford to start the game on Saturday against Brighton. Uh, like I said, Rashford came on in the game against Luton but didn't start. I think Rashford has really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. He's just recently recovered from an ankle injury as Marcus Rashford. Don't forget he had a back injury for us last season and he was out with this injury for quite a few months. Rashford has been part of the club for several years. I think he's been with us now for around 15 years or so because he's been in United players since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. I presume that uh, Greenwood will be starting this game. Uh, like I said, Greenwood did come on against Luton. Greenwood didn't also start the game against Crystal Palace. We have had a few issues with Mason Greenwood recently, don't forget. Something to do with him inhaling laughing gas. And don't forget it was withdrawn from the England squad by Gareth Southgate. So too was Phil Foden for inviting girls back to the team hotel. But this is obviously before we kicked off our season. I think Sol Scarzel talks with Mason Greenwood regarding his private life. But we know now he is number 11, Mason Greenwood, and he's the fourth Manchester United player to fulfil the number 11. Solskjaer has said what Mason Greenwood needs to improve on if he is to be our long-term number nine. No. And he's, Solskjaer said he's got to improve with his head. Uh, Martial, I think he will be starting the game on Saturday against Brighton. Obviously, no, Martial uh, was rested against Luton, wasn't he? And I think Martial has done very, very well under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Um, he was very, very good last season. Martial has enjoyed around five years with the football club. I thought he was also very, very good in his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. Uh, the only injuries we have got is uh, Phil Jones and Alex Tuanzebe. So they are the only absentees. But uh, we should be winning this game against Brighton. Obviously, no, we won this fixture last season at the Amex Stadium by three goals to nil. And we won the game at Old Trafford by three goals to one. We've lost twice at the Amex Stadium since Brighton came up. You know, we lost there once 3-2 and we also lost there once 1-0. Now... Brighton and Brighton have won their last two games, haven't they? Haven't they? You know they beat Preston recently two nil. Uh, they were not so long ago beat Newcastle by three goals to nil. Uh, Brighton have got a few injuries, by the way. I want to give you an update on. I think Tarek Lampte is out with injury for them. They've also got Aaron Connolly out. They've got Dale Stevens out. I think Dale Stevens is set to go to Burnley. They've got Christian. What's his name? Is it Christian Walton out? They've got Florin and Andro Andorn out. Yeah, Florin Andorn. They've got Busy Bisomu suspended. So yeah, Brighton have got a few players out. But Brighton, you know, have still got some good players in their team. You know, they've obviously you know got Glenn Murray, very, very good. They've got Pascal Gross. They've got Malpe, 
They've got Lewis Dunk, who I think is a very, very good centre-half for them. Uh, Matty Ryan's a pretty decent goalkeeper. You know, they've obviously got Adam Lallana, who they got from Liverpool. Uh, they've got ben, Ra ben White. I think Ben White recently signed a new contract with Brighton. Brighton's current manager is Graham Potter. I think Brighton is the third club in his managerial career. Before he was at Brighton, I think he was at Swansea. And I think before he was at Swansea, he was at Ostersund, was Graham Potter. And the recent managers that Brighton have had, before obviously you no know, Graham Potter, uh, they had obviously Chris Hewton, they had Nathan Jones, and they also had Sammy Herpia. But I am uh, really, really looking forward to this game on Saturday. So that is uh, your preview for the Brighton Manchester United game. I presume that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer will be doing his press conference tomorrow ahead of the game. By the way, like I said to you after uh, the Luton game, Solskjaer has become the third fastest manager to win 50 games. And I think he's managed around 92 games for Manchester United. Now, I want to delve into some transfer news. So, Manchester United are set to sign Alex Tells from Porto. So, it's looking likely he's going to be our second signing in this summer transfer window. Now, Alex Tells is determined to join the football club. We are still in negotiations with Porto over a fee because a fee has not yet come to an agreement. I think we are reluctant to meet Porto's £17 million asking price and we try to convince Porto to lower their asking price. Now, it's said we don't encountered a stumbling block for our transfer pursuit of Alex Tells yesterday due to George Mendes because George Mendes has been involved in negotiations. Now, Alex Tells has agreed terms on a five-year contract with Manchester United worth £70,000 a week. Fabrizio Romano, who's a very reliable Italian journalist, you know, he's confident that Manchester United will get a deal over the line. Alex Tells has got a £36 million release clause. He's got around nine and a half, ten months left on his current contract with Porto. So from a Porto perspective, they'll want to cash in for him rather than letting go on a free transfer next year. The other week, Alex tells his agent was in Manchester to thrash out a deal for his client to join Manchester United. But Porto's boss did recently make an admission and he said that Alex Tells could be leaving uh, in the next fortnight. Alex Tells said, you know, he's not distracted by rumours linked in with a move to Man United. You know, he has been at Porto for a few years now. Before he was at Porto, he had a loan spell over Inter Milan. Before he was at Inter Milan, he was at Galatasaray. And when he was younger, he played for Gramero and Juventude. And he is the age of 27, is Alex Tells. So he's highly experienced. He's predominantly a left back. And I said it's very beneficial if Manchester United can recommend a left back in. We have got two predominant left backs in the team at the moment. And that's obviously Luke Shaw. He's our first choice left back. But my element of concern about Luke Shaw is injury prone. And also to Brandon Williams. Don't forget, uh, we tried to include Diego Delo as part of the deal of us getting Alex Tells, but Porto had turned this down. And Tells did make an admission saying he was hoping to complete a transfer to Manchester United this week. And another one of, another one of the main explanations why we've gone in for Alex Tells is because we missed out on Sergio Reguilon, you know. Now, I want to delve into some news on Jadon Sancho from Borussia Dortmund. So, 
Reportedly, Borussia Dortmund are interested in Ismail Saar from Watford. So Dortmund have now found their replacement for Sancho. So you can say that Ismail Saar is crucial to Manchester United signing Jadon Sancho. We've also been interested in Ismail Saar. Now, obviously, talks are still ongoing with Jadon Sancho. Uh, David Einstein from The Athletic, he provides us with an update on Sancho and he mentions that the terms have been agreed on a long-term contract. I don't think Manchester United can afford Sancho because obviously, you know, Dortmund are demanding a substantial amount. Dortmund want around £108 million and we've been reluctant to meet their valuation. Now, there's reports also coming out saying that we could sell six, up to six players to fund a move for Sancho. Now, Lucy and Favre, Borussia Dortmund's boss, said a few weeks ago, didn't he, that Sancho will stay at Dortmund. Sebastian Kell, he also recently said that Sancho will stay at Dortmund and he won't leave in this summer transfer window. And he says that Man United haven't got a chance of getting him in a cut price deal. But we was hoping to sign Sancho before the Crystal Palace game, but obviously that never materialised. Solskjaer's held several talks with Sancho over the move to Man United. But we've just not yet come to an agreement on a fee with uh, Dortmund. And obviously we've been looking at a lot of alternatives to him because there's much cheaper solutions in him. You know, we've been looking at Ivan Perisic. We've been looking at Douglas Costa. We've been looking at Ismail Assar, like I mentioned. We've been looking at Ansemane Fati Vieira, Usain Dembele. But if we don't sign him in this summer transfer window, we may never sign Sancho because next year we will face competition for the player. He is our number one priority target and we have been in for him for like the last three years. But one thing we did confirm, we will not give up on the signing of the player. So that is the latest on that. There's around, is it two weeks left now until the summer transfer window shuts? And Solskjaer is very, very frustrated with the lack of transfer activity. And Solskjaer easily revealed that he was frustrated with our board. But we've been critical of the board anyway for several years, reflecting on how poor our recruitment policy has been. We've also overpaid for players. We've made a lot of mistakes in the last seven years and that's one of the main explanations why we've been so inconsistent. I think the managers that we've had since Ferguson retired have not been backed enough and I don't think Solskjaer's been backed enough in this summer transfer window. And Solskjaer's already publicly admitted that Manchester United have got to spend money in this summer transfer window if we are to be up there with the likes of City, Liverpool and now perhaps Chelsea. We've only made one signing so far in this summer transfer window and that was Donny van der Beek. But Solskjaer said he wants to make like three more signings after Donny van der Beek. But you can see that Solskjaer's trying to improve the squad and he's trying to change the culture of the club. There's The key areas where Man United have got a strength, you know, we've got to get a centre-half in to go alongside Harry Maguire, despite the fact that we've got seven centre-halves in the team. We've got to get a left-back in. We've also got to get a right winner in. Don't forget before we was in for a striker. But we've missed out on a lot of our targets in this summer transfer window. I missed out on Sergio Reguilon, went to Tottenham when we actually should have got Reguilon. We missed out on Gareth Bale, he went back to Tottenham. Grealish signed a five-year deal with Villa and we was in for him for a while. We missed out on Erling Haaland in January. We also missed out on Jude Bellingham. So this is a very, very infuriating. And another one of my element of concerns is, is that these teams around us that are doing very, very good recruitment. You know, Chelsea, by far they've done the best business so far. They've brought the likes of Ziyech in, Termo, Werner. They've just recently brought Mendy in. Uh, Kai Havertz. Ben Chirwell. Thiago Silva. Milan Saar, you know, Chelsea now try to get Declan Rice. Chelsea's priority is to get a replacement for Kepa Arizabalaga. 
City, you know, they've made some good signings. They've brought Ferran Torres in and Nathan Ake. Liverpool, they've brought Diego Jota in, Thiago and Sigmas. Arsenal, they've brought Gabriel Magalhães in and William. Uh, Tottenham, they've made some good signings. They've brought Sergio Reguilin in, brought Bale back, like I mentioned, brought Holberg in, Joe Hart, Doyle, Doyle and Kyle Walker-Peters. Leeds, you know, they've even made some good signings. Um, Everton, they've also made some good signings. You know what I mean? But this summer transfer window is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's fourth transfer window as Manchester United manager. And so far at the football club, he has spent around £240 million. But he definitely deserves more backing at Manchester United. He really, really does. And we're not, we, we can't only focus on the incomings, you know, we've also got to focus on the outgoings as well. Because like I said to my video I did earlier on today, we are finding departures very, very difficult. And I said that it's very, very important that we offload our fringe players. Because obviously if we sell players, it'll help us with our rebuilding process, we'll generate money. And quite frankly, he is still deadwood at the football club. Now, obviously, we're looking to get rid of Jesse Lingard. I think Solskjaer said he wants him to stay at the club, though, because Lingard's been part of the club for several years. You know, Tottenham have recently been in for Lingard. Pereira, he could end up staying now at Manchester United, but I'd like him to leave her smalling. Roma are going to put a second bid in for him in the coming days. Uh, because Rome have already had a £12 million bid turned down. I think our valuation is around £18 million, but we won't budget on that valuation. You know, Smalling was out on loan with Roma last season. Uh, Phil Jones, we're also looking to get rid of him. Rojo, he's another player we're looking to get rid of. You know, Diego Delo, I think Manchester United should get rid of him. And obviously Sergio Romero, he's open to leaving the football club. Because obviously now Romero is third choice goalkeeper at Manchester United because Dean Henderson recently returned. Uh, there's obviously no being rumours of Daniel James leaving and Leeds United have been in for James. But I think actually no Daniel James wants to stay at Manchester United and fight for his future under Solskjaer. You know what I mean? So still quite a bit to do. But this is Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's second full season at Manchester United. And like I've said to you on my other videos, I don't know if he is the right man manager for Manchester United. I don't really have a perception at the moment because we've only played two games, obviously. As, I see, as it delves into the season more, then I will give you more of a perception on Solskjaer. You know? But obviously, you know, when we lost 3-1 to Crystal Palace, you know, you'd have had probably a lot of Manchester United fans or some Manchester United fans criticising Solskjaer, wouldn't you? Because definitely Solskjaer's decision-making has got to improve at Manchester United. He's got to improve at Manchester United. Because in a lot of games, you know, he's been very tactically naive. But everyone's got to take the blame, you know, for when we've been very, very inconsistent and that. But it was like the first part of last season, you know, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. And at that point, there was talks of Richo Pochettino coming in and there was also talks of Masmiliano Allegri coming in. But all of a sudden, after that, after that bad period, you know, we turned things around. We went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions. We went on a 14-game unbeaten run in the Premier League. Obviously, that got ended from that 3-1 defeat to Crystal Palace. But I give you the reasons why Solskjaer didn't get sat. Obviously, you know, Bruno Fernandes, he's made the difference since he come in. With Solskjaer being a club legend as well, you can say that played a part in it. I think our record against the top six slides last season was also very, very good. And we've obviously, you know, seen improvements in that. You know, there's players that have definitely stepped up to the plate, which is obviously, you know, very, very good. But... I said to you on one of my other videos, who would Manchester United recommend in if Solskjaer was to be sat? And, you know, probably Pochettino would be the favourite. Then maybe Masmiliano Allegri would be spoken about. You know, Zinedine Zidane, he was linked with the managerial role at Man United at one point. 
And Solskjaer knows he's got to exceed his expectations this season if he's to remain Manchester United manager. Now, I said, I think we need to make at least a couple of more signings if we are to mount a title challenge up this season. You know, we haven't won the Premier League since 2013 and we haven't mounted any title challenge up in the last seven years. And definitely we are at least, I'd say, three to four years off winning the Premier League title. I think one of the expectations this season will be to win a trophy. We want to win a trophy this season under Solskjaer. We've not yet won out in terms of silverware under the Norwegian and he's been here for nearly two years now. We haven't won a trophy for over three years. So it's very, very important that we do win a trophy. So to me, the Cowbell Cup is a priority. Uh, the F we, 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 you, know, you know, we can have a go at the FA Cup. Uh, won't win the Champions League because we're not good enough to win that. You know, won't win the Premier League. You know, we're not good enough to win that. You know, but Solskjaer was saying, wasn't he? You know, prior to the Crystal Palace game, just before the se our season started, he was saying, you know, we've got confidence going on to this season from where we left off last season. Last season was Solskjaer's first full season at the club, and to be fair, he did well. You know, he exceeded most of his expectations. Obviously, got us qualification for the Champions League. Also got us a uh, third place, and that's the second highest we've finished in the Ferguson era. And we also progressed to three semi-finals. We got to the FA Cup semi-final, the Europa League semi-final, and the EFL Cup semi-final. The only expectation we didn't exceed last season was winning a trophy. You know what I mean? But Solskjaer hasn't got a proven pedigree. That is one of my element of concerns, but I still love him a lot either way. He has gained some managerial experience now, obviously, because uh, reflects how long he's been with us. And Man United is the third club in his managerial career. Uh, obviously, before he was with us, he was at Mould. Won a few Norwegian titles with them. Quite good at Mould, but at Cardiff, he was very, very poor. Um, he only enjoyed the short tenure with Cardiff. The main explanation he got sat from Cardiff is because he ended up getting them relegated and that. Um, I think throughout the course of this season, like I mentioned, Solskjaer will go a lot with a 4 2 3 1 formation. He has gone a lot with that formation since he got appointed in as Manchester United manager. A few times he's gone with a few different formations. But one thing I have liked about him since he got appointed in as Man United manager that he's had a habit of developing young homegrown talents. Um, he recently set a challenge for our academy players to replicate the likes of Mason Greenwood and Brandon Williams. But if things were to go wrong in the next four to five games, then the pressure would mount up even more on Solskjaer. Uh, probably wouldn't have eased off Solskjaer from, the, from uh, the win against Luton because it is only Luton town. And, you know, we did struggle a bit, to be fair. You know, it was 1-0 for a while. But if we did sack Solskjaer, I don't think it would solve a lot, really, because Man United are not really known as a sacking football club, despite the fact that we have sacked three managers since the Ferguson era. You know, that was Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. But some managers do deserve time. They really, really do. Um, but um, within our first... Um, like I said to you, within... I said within our first seven games, obviously, you know, we've played Palace now, obviously, but soon we've got um, Tottenham coming up. Tottenham's actually after Brighton in the league, and that's going to be a tough game. That's going to be the first hard one. Then we've got Arsenal, Chelsea coming up very, very soon. Everton's coming up very, very soon. So these are games that Manchester United have got to win. You know what I mean? So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. And take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.